Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a sci-fi drama film, Vesper. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. In the new dark ages of man, humanity tries to prevent an impending ecological crisis by heavily investing in genetic technology. But despite their efforts, they fail. Several engineered viruses and organisms escape into the wild and wipe out many edible plants, animals, and a large population of humans. Enclosed cities called citadels now thrive under an oligarchy. While the rest of humanity struggles to survive, people now rely on seeds traded by the citadels for food. But these seeds are coded to produce only one type of harvest. The scene cuts to a floating round robot and a child rummaging through the foggy wastelands. A 13-year-old girl named Vesper digs through the wet soil in hopes of finding a harvest, but instead, she finds a colorful worm that attaches itself to her hand. Vesper calls the robot to follow her back through the forest. Large dead monsters litter the background and fallen trees obstruct the forest path. Vesper finds their way home through the many living organisms that plague the area around the house. She diligently washes the dishes and prepares medicine for her father, whose life is being supported by DIY machines. It turns out the robot is used by her father to communicate with her and follow her. Vesper excuses herself and heads to the old laboratory. Vesper travels to the lab close by. The robot follows her and remarks that it hates the place. They enter the rundown lab, which is pitch black in the darkness. Vesper plays around with the flashlight in her hand, and the robot tells her to stop because its battery is low. She tells the robot that it didn't have to come follow her down there. The robot tells her that she is wasting her time with the experiments she conducts in the lab. Suddenly, sounds come from outside the building, which prompts Vesper to leave and investigate. They find a pilgrim rummaging through the scrap metal. The robot tells her to leave, but not before the pilgrim takes a good look at her. She then hauls the scrap metal away. On the way home, Vesper tells the robot that one day she wants to follow a pilgrim and figure out where they take the scrap metal to. The robot tells her that pilgrims don't ever come back and just wander until they die. When they reach home, they notice that the door is open and someone or something is inside with her father. Vesper takes out a knife and carefully treads around the house. She finds that the tank that is supporting her father has been cut. The robot tells her to get the spare battery from the fridge, but it turns out she took the battery out to make space for her cell structures, which forces her to find another battery. She goes to the camp of a man named Jonas in hopes of finding another battery for her father. Once she enters the camp, she spots a commotion between the residents. A young boy is told to kill a creature made in the lab to end its misery. The young boy struggles, but does the job. It is revealed that Jonas is the brother of her father. She tells her uncle that someone sabotaged their generator. Jonas tells her that he cannot give anything to them out of charity. Vesper tells him that she is not asking for his charity and heads inside the main building of the camp. Jonas tells her that the citadels are raising the price of seeds. Vesper sits down on the medical chair. She gives her blood to Jonas because the citadels trade in seeds with survivors using the blood of young children. Jonas tells her to bring her father to the camp instead because it is dangerous to live without the protection of others. Vesper asks for bacteria from Jonas, but he tells her that she needs to come back in two days because he needs to sell the blood to the citadel. Vesper tries to get her blood back, but Jonas stops her and kicks her ass out of the camp. Meanwhile, her father struggles to breathe due to the lack of power that's keeping him alive. Vesper steals resources from the camp and tries to bring back as much as possible back to her father. Before night falls, she tries to make it back, dodging the monsters that came in her path. She makes it home and shows her father the seeds she took from Jonas. Her father tells her to bring them back, but she argues that she can make them grow without a lab. She runs away from the house and discovers a young girl in the forest, being drained of blood by giant leech monsters. She takes the girl back home and nurses her wounds. Later, Vesper tries to fix the generator, but the robot tells her to bring her back to where she found her. The girl awakens and tells Vesper to take her to the place she found her, so that she may search for her father. The robot tells her that they are not her servants, but the girl offers a reward if they can find her father instead. The girl introduces herself as Camellia. Vesper's offers to find her father despite the warnings from the robot. Vesper makes dinner for Camellia, and she thanks her. Camellia asks about Vesper's father, and it is revealed that he was once a soldier for the Citadel's army. When he got hurt, they gave him a robot, so that he may use it for communication, and left him. Her father starts seizing, and Camellia tells Vesper to hold him down. The next day, Vesper asks her father what Camellia did to him, and he replies that he doesn't know either. They find the crash site and find Camellia's father still inside a glider. Jonas and his crew find the crash site as well, and Jonas speaks to Camellia's father. The father asks for his help, but Jonas kills him. Vesper tries to stop him, but she is held back. Jonas questions Vesper about how she found the crash site, but the robot tells her to leave. 
Jonas tells her that she cannot leave without helping salvage the glider first. The robot tells Vesper that she needs to contact the Citadel, and the only way to do that is to find the Citadel transmitter in the possession of Jonas. They come home and tell Camellia that they did not find the crash site and will try to search again tomorrow. Vesper notices that Camellia has a wound on her leg and takes her outside in the evening, hoping to find a plant that could speed up the healing process. She takes Camellia to their garden and she finds the flora within to be very beautiful. The plants take a liking to Camellia. When Vesper finds herself occupied with the plants, the robot talks to Camellia in silence and tells her that he won't make it to the Citadel in time, but tells her that the garden means everything to Vesper. Back home, Vesper takes care of her father. Camellia asks about Vesper's mother, and she tells her that she left Vesper and her father to become a pilgrim. Vesper notes that a virus might have turned people into pilgrims, and that is why her mother left. Vesper brings out a book of sketches that contains the drawings of animals before the dark ages of man happened. Camellia tells Vesper all about the animals in the drawings and how citadels can create any life form they want to. Vesper brings out an instrument for Camellia to play, and she performs a tune wonderfully. The next scene shows the many gliders arriving at the camp of Jonas. Vesper sneaks through the fences and enters the farm, where Jonas confronts her about the missing seeds in Camellia. It turns out, Jonas took the robot and destroyed most of its functions. Vesper tries to run away with the robot, but she is chased by the people in the camp. She is branded with a mark before she manages to get home. Once she is home, Camellia asks if she is able to contact the Citadel, but Vesper reveals that the robot is broken and her father cannot use it to communicate anymore. She leads Camellia to the place where Jonas dumped her father's body. Camellia approaches the body, full of grief. Vesper gets Camellia out of the pond before she can drown herself. Camellia reveals that she was never going to take Vesper and her father into the Citadel because she and her father made a deal with another Citadel to give them refugee status. Vesper gets mad and throws mud on Camellia. Back at home, Vesper tells Camellia to clean up and leave. She manages to fix the robot, and her father apologizes for being a burden to her. Camellia takes a knife and attempts to kill herself, but Vesper stops her. Vesper tells her that she cannot give up just because things are hard. She tells Camellia to sit down and asks if she can study a sample of Camellia, who turns out to be a jug, a created human being. In the evening, Vesper studies the sample of Camellia and discovers that most of her DNA are locked. Camellia tells stories of her time in the Citadel and tells Vesper that she would find the Citadel to be boring. Camellia plays an instrument for Vesper, and she discovers that she can unlock the code of the seeds that the Citadel trades, and she can make them fertile. The robot tells Camellia to take Vesper to the Citadel. The next morning, Jonas enters the house and meets Camellia. Jonas tries to take Camellia, but Vesper intervenes. They both manage to overpower Jonas. Vesper offers a deal to her uncle. She reveals that she can make the Citadel seeds fertile and that they would have all the food they need. Jonas contacts the Citadel about the whereabouts of Camellia. Vesper works hard to figure out the key to unlocking the DNA sequence. She finally unlocks the code, but suddenly the house becomes under attack. The Citadel releases gas inside the house. The robot tells Vesper and Camellia to head inside the Citadel and trade the seeds for their safety. Vesper says goodbye to her father, and they both hide inside the swamp. The Citadel's enforcement arrives at the house and at the camp of Jonas. They kill Jonas and discover that the house is empty. Vesper's father blows up the house to slow down the Citadel enforcement, which kills him in the process. Both Vesper and Camellia run through the forest. They duck behind a patch of tall grass and quietly crawl through. A Citadel enforcer almost finds them, but they manage to stay well hidden. Unfortunately, a plant gives away the location of Vesper, and Camellia tries to bargain with the Enforcer, and they both manage to take them down. They hear the sounds of gliders in the distance. Camellia tells Vesper that the Citadel won't stop sending Enforcers their way until she surrenders herself to them. Vesper pleads to Camellia to stay, but she makes her fall asleep and hides her in the forest. After that, Camellia surrenders herself to the Enforcers. The next day, Vesper wakes up to find herself alone in the middle of the forest. She comes back to her house and buries the seeds in the ground. She meets a group of children who start following her around. Vesper and the children follow a pilgrim back to the place where they take the scrap metals. They find that the pilgrims built a high tower. Vesper climbs the tower, and when she finally reaches the top, she sees the Citadel cities in the distance. But right now, she no longer wants to get inside the Citadel. Vesper has realized that she holds the key to making the world a better place for everyone. She turns away from the Citadel cities and instead fixes her gaze on where the mountains and the rivers are. The movie ends with Vesper taking out the remaining seeds she has and scattering them in the wind so they would sprout and give hope to the dying world. This Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.